Demo Lit Garage. Today we're going to be bringing you a video that I know a few people have been asking for. Um, we have the MR2 Spider from the ZZW30 generation and an MR2 Turbo from the SW20 generation car. And uh, me and John here, we're going to be driving them, comparing them, and just kind of talking about some of the features. Uh, before we get into this, I just want to let you guys know that uh, both these cars are not stock, especially this guy right over here. There's probably like a page list. Full of mods. Alright, so let's get right into it. I'm gonna start in the MR2 Spider. Johnny's gonna start in the Turbo. And, uh, yeah. Just have fun with it. Have fun <laughs> with it. Make the best of it. All right guys, so just hopping in the MR2 Spider. This is, you know, every day for me, so it's nothing new. But I'm still gonna go ahead and uh, talk about, you know, my initial impressions of the car and yada yada. I think the car feels very light and uh, it reflects in the handling a lot. I know I've talked about that in the past in other videos. But like the way that this car rotates and the way that the front end points and goes wherever you, wherever you point it, it goes. And I think that is one of the biggest, strongest characteristics of this car, seriously. I started out in the SW20 uh, MR2, and um, this is actually my first time driving it, and it's, uh, it's pretty sweet. There's a lot done to the car, and uh, it's actually really quick. Obviously, these cars don't have the most amazing interior ever, though. Materials are plastic with only a few soft touch spots. Um, but materials aside, I, th I like the layout of it. The ergonomics are good. The shifter is really close to the steering wheel. Um, and with this center console that I put in, uh, I have an armrest. So I, I, I guess that wouldn't be there if you had a stock car. So there's not much of an armrest and I don't think it looks as good. But it's a light car and a, a relatively affordable car. So, you know, it sacrifices in some of those categories. I have the aftermarket head unit in here. So I have the touchscreen radio and stuff. So that's kind of nice. But without that, you have a very generic Toyota radio and and then your climate control switches and that's it. This car doesn't even have cruise control. Um, yeah, I got like the typical unlock lock, window lock, mirror control, but I mean, that's really all the little luxuries you get in this car. Um, but I don't know that the MR2 Turbo is any different as far as luxuries. I know you get better materials in that older car, which I really like the interior in the Turbo. Another thing I noticed, throttle is kind of I guess heavy. You kind of have to really uh, rev it a bit to get it going. I mean, it takes it, it doesn't rev up like a light, like an NA car or anything like that. And I've owned an S2000 in the past, and it's just been like you touch the throttle and like it just shoots up. So I'm not really used to that. Jeez, man, I'm sweating like crazy in here. Done. Done. Uh, now that we're moving a little faster here, too, we'll talk about the power. It's not fast. Um, I knew that. I know that. But it's not. It's not so slow that it can't get out of its own way. It's light. It accelerates well, especially uh, lower speeds, acceleration on the topic of power of the engine, I guess. Uh, where the turbo obviously offers like a really, really great noise. The exhaust is super throaty, and you get the turbo noises. This car it definitely has that NA sound. You get like the throaty induction noise, especially with the intake that I put on it. And uh, the exhaust is great. It's definitely not as loud as the turbo, so. I, it's, it's almost more tame and as far as like the noise level you get something else I want to talk about now that we're at higher speeds the sensitivity of the steering which I really like some people might not but the sensitivity of the steering is extreme like every little touch moves the car a lot especially at these speeds and uh, I really like that it means that you don't have to you know put it put as much input into the steering all right so we're about to go drive this car handles. Keep in mind this is my first time driving this car and since it's not my car out of respect I'm not going to just you know go all out. Brakes are 
about the way this car steers through the corners is so good. I mean, seriously, I'm not even pushing it hard. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we couldn't take these cars anywhere where we could really uh, open them up. You can brake really late in this car. It's so light. The front end does exactly what you want it to. Oh, it's great. It's so great. Brake late. Brake hard. Turn in. It does what you want it to. This is why I love this car. This is why I love it. It, it goes to the corner so good. And we're on stock suspension. It's crazy. I really love it. All right. I think we are going to pull off here and switch up cars. All right, guys. We just stopped here at a, a park. You've probably seen this park in other videos. But we're going to switch cars. But before we do that, we are going to... We're just going to go over the modifications these cars have so you guys have a better idea. Um, I'm just kind of like what we're dealing with, what we're working with. My car, it's pretty simple. It has the intake that you guys may have seen me install. It has the Team Moon exhaust and uh, Sparco seats. And I think that's it. This car, um, I'll actually bring you guys up closer because there's just too much to talk about. I'm gonna forget things here because I just don't know everything that's done to the car. So it has uh, the CT20B turbo, which is off the Toyota Supra, so it's a stock Toyota turbo. Um, Upgraded intake system, uh, I don't even know what brand, like different catch can, uh, the TCS strut tower support, that's really hot. Johnny was just saying, and uh, it's a good point, there's a lot of custom stuff down here that my dad's done. This, uh, These aftermarket cooling fans and shroud and stuff, that was all my dad's work. And aftermarket intercooler with the fan there, uh, it has a catless downpipe, bark exhaust, and a whole other slew of performance mods that maybe I could get my dad to talk about sometime that I don't know off the top of my head. Other than performance modifications, it has the FN01RC 5 Ziggins, the Eagle F1s like I told you, uh, TRD sway bars front and rear, it has the Tyne, I think they're like Monoflex something, dampers, really cool inverted monotube shocks. Um, also something else that's particular about this car, it's a 1993 and uh, it did not come with these. These are the 94 and up tail lights, uh, 94 and up rear spoiler. Uh, moving on to the interior, obviously we've got two really nice seats here. They're both Corbo seats. The driver size is a regular size and the Corbo is a little wider for passengers, of course. Um, it's got a TRD short shifter as well as a TRD shift knob. Feels really great while driving. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but that's also something that I really liked about the car. All right, so here we are in the trunk. Yes, this car is a trunk. Mine does not. Uh, we got the Mega Squirt ECU. Long story short, the car's a lot of stuff done to it, and um, it performs really well. <laughs> well, we're already off, and I'm pretty much just revving this car up because in the other MR2, you really have to put your foot down to get going. You can say it feels a lot different right now. Everything just kind of seems to move in really easily. Oh man, I'm still revving it really high. My bad. You're seeing this, sorry, Jake. Immediately, um, the seating position is pretty different. Um, the pedals are a lot more firm. The uh, throttle and clutch. Let me roll the window here. The throttle and the clutch are a lot more firm in this one. Oh man, <laughs> this car has so much more torque.
there's like a lot of body roll, I feel like it's not even that bad. I mean, it, it, it grips. The tires on these are really nice. I think, uh, I forget what they are exactly, but there are some nice grippy tires and I think it did really well in the corners actually. As long as you're careful, um, accelerating out of the corners, there's uh, not too much to worry about, but you gotta be careful with that said because this car does produce a good amount of torque as soon as the turbos pull up. And uh, if you're not careful, you can really break them free. And these cars are notoriously hard to handle in the corners when they get squirrely. We just went through those corners back there and uh, initially I would say you have to, there's a lot more arm input. I had to turn my arms really far compared to the MR2 Spider. So comparing this car to the uh, SW20, uh, I'd say, I mean, they're, they're different. I mean, in terms of like interior and things like that, of course they're all different, but I like both a lot just because they're simple and they're just plain. Uh, everything, I would say the SW20 is kind of more driver oriented as how the interior design is. Everything's kind of like facing you, whereas right? like you have things in the middle here that the passenger can access as well. I like that I sit lower in this car, but I think that's just due to the seats in the other MR2. So one thing that I will say, <laughs> he just did a big pull in front of me. Uh, one thing that I will say that I like about this car, uh, when I first got into it, is uh, how torquey it was for a four-cylinder. I mean, um, before this, I owned an S2000, and I could stomp on it in, like, second gear, and I felt like it didn't pull as hard as this car did, so it could be due to the engine just being the back, and that's where, how the drivetrain is set up. It's an MR, so everything's all there. There's no drivetrain loss or anything. All right, we're pulling out of that back, or we're going to do a little second gear pull here. This car definitely pulls hard. All right, here we go. Oh my god. <laughs> the turbo feels so good. I, it's really hard to go from a car that's NA with, you know, relatively low power to something that makes good torque and uh, has the turbo like that. Because, gosh, dude, this thing, this thing just pulls hard. After spending the day driving both of the MR2s, I'm just kind of going to go over some of the main things that I noticed between the two. And uh, to start off with is, uh, of course, power. The SW20 has a lot more power. It's really torquey and it really puts you in your seat. And not to discredit this car at all, it's still really torquey. It's just obviously, you know, isn't up to par when it comes to power and, uh, to the SW20. All right, guys, we're back home now. It's been a, we've been in the car for a few hours out in the hot sun, sweaty and tired. Okay, so I'm gonna start just by saying that first driving MR2 Turbo, my first um, my initial thought was just, of course, the throttle. To me, that was kind of weird. I had to really push down the pedal, and that's not something I was used to. So for the black MR2 here, I mean, nothing really beats kind of like the lightweight, like go-kart feel of the car. And that's something that I love. And I think that's why I can't really choose <laughs> which car is better for me. Yeah, we're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna say yeah. one's better than the other. We right. want you guys to decide. Like, I, I had a ton of fun driving both of these cars for their own, like, personal reasons. As far as styling goes, um, obviously it's subjective, so... We're not, I don't really think I can say I like one better than the other. I think this car looks great. It looks older. It's like classic Japanese car. I love it. This one has a completely different look. I also love it, but, you know, teach their own, I guess. I don't know. Funny, funny, funny story, actually. Uh, right? yeah. I used to really hate it on this generation of too. I did not care the way that it looked for at all. And then Jake started showing me more and more, and I was seeing, like, really nice ones, ones that are done up, and then... It, it really grew on me, and I, I do very much like this. I don't think he's alone in saying that either. You know, a lot of people I say that I have an MR2, they, they hope I have this one. <laughs> but, I mean, it's not that I don't love that one. I love both of them, but um, I got this one, and, and everyone... This is definitely, I think, the fan favorite amongst the three generations of MR2s. But, I mean, the looks grow on people. I've always been a fan. Johnny said they grew on him, and I think the same with uh, some of our other friends, that the looks of this car definitely grew on, because it's not for everybody, but... Um, I don't know. I like them both. Yeah. Yeah. Get an MR2. <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this sort of, it's, it's not like a detailed comparison. It's more of just like an impressions of each car. 
obviously neither car is stock, so can't really say MR2 versus MR2, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to be doing uh, some pretty cool stuff, actually, this upcoming weekend, hopefully, oh, yeah, you know, weather, right. weather permitting. So um, stay tuned for that, guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.